Greetings and salutations everyone, I'm Ekamak, this is Let's Play Limbus Company Oblivion. In the last episode, we lost control of our lives. Uh, our new Blood Fiend friend has taken over the Sinners and is using them to, in a play, talking about Don Quixote's adventures, and I've thought about it. I'm going to use an extract, uh, just a little bit of lunacy to see if we can pick up something nice. It might, like, I should be saving this for the next World Progress Knot because we saw how I needed it, that uh, pity pull, but... You didn't even give me Sinclair. Uh, do they usually look faded out like this? Alright, so we didn't get our Sinclair, but we do have a few things to fall back on. Not enough to pull him, but we at least have something to fill in the episode should there be something... Uh, should we have enough leftover time after dream ending. Of the adventure to lay claim upon the helm of Mambrind and the roles that are given. Slash and Pierce weakness, huh? Actually, assuming that there'd be the same sort of problems, I think I want to swap Donny over to her She Association director. This looks weird, but this... The thing is, this one is actually kind of good. And if she does end up being staggered again and almost dying, then it's also going to give her her HP bonus. Which also makes, um, hang on. Which also makes She Association, uh, Ishmael here pretty decent. I would swap her over to Mola Boatworks because PS is still effective. Or maybe, hmm. Ah. Potential, but I'm not going to waste time in the episode doing it. This would also be pretty good because he's pierce resistant and weak to blunt. The downside is he's only level 1 and I don't feel like spending all those tickets catching him up. Heck, I haven't even gotten around to that she association that to his, um... Uh, what is it? Dicey, his Dicey Association. So yeah, anyway, um, we're going straight in. Ryoshu is kind of the odd one out, but her Lobcore Yehigo is just too good. Oh, we're slightly lower than average, but that means we can just get S. That means we can start getting our SP. The way that the levels keep bouncing up and down is a little distracting. Ep 3. In which is recounted the matter of Don Quixote and the helmet. Don Quixote, Momon, Kuhurodo Keso, Yazogasmida. Oh, you Muringa, Bonga, some Malaug in Hanumika. Kurumdri calls him Maria Dongo Switchanao. Yeah. The horse shouldn't be talking. This is definitely Don Quixote completely forgetting our sidekick and attributing all of his lines to her horse. Yeah, 
무엇이길래? 지나가는 나그네요. 이 금방 어딘가 있다고 전해지는 고귀한 기사에 절대적이면서도 찬란하게 빛나는 만브리노의 투구에 대해 아시는가? Another plane flying by. Oh well, but what a title! A noble and knightly helm of the absolutely and incandescently resplendent Mabrino. She is. Ooh. I'm not exactly sure what sort of emotions those are. It's probably a lot of bad ones. Is it Mersault or Heathcliff? Uh, uh, the dignity of all the stand out uh, it's all the standoffish self-respecting sinners are getting their ego taken down a few pegs. What are we gonna use in the upcoming battle? Wait. Behold, I am beholding it. Wait, is it a cardboard boss fight? Yes, it is. Grrr, grrr. And inflicts with him against protection. Big scary bear. Boy, can we stop now? Gain attack power up next turn, but only on use, so make sure to offset this skill. Deal 15% more damage, an encounter of moderate difficulty. Deal extra damage to people below HP percent. In a clash, opponent just might lose one SP, maybe. An actual bear. It eats people, how fearsome! Oh, and this would be a turn where we have no lust skills, wouldn't it? But also, ooh. Oh dear. Maybe we'll get lucky and yield flesh here. That's a lot of HP though. Damn it. Ow, ow. Inflict rupture. Inflict bleed and rupture. Twenty-eight is not nice. I can't throw away Skullbuster. On the upside, we have gotten enough resonance that he has to flip two heads and I have to flip a tails, plus we're going to get whistles, so at least two people are going to get their SP back. Unfortunately, I think those two are going to be Ryoshu and Force. Oh! 
Oh, you can actually tell the order by looking at what order that their Sinna icons are in. And then this tells us what order they're going to rush out onto the field. That's very useful. Question, where'd the burn come from? Looks like things are in our favor, let's keep it going. Oh! It came from you, because you're always throwing out random status effects. Okay, I get it. Listen, you sod, it's... Grrr. I'm kinda... Hmm. I wonder if, uh... Did I see if Heathcliff was banned from this battle before I started? I can't actually remember. If target has 5 bleed, coin power plus 1. It'll be hilarious if this guy starts showing up in mirror dungeons and he's actually a horrifyingly powerful boss fight. Yeah, let's go. Not horrifying, but I could see things getting out of hand very quickly. Or is I hmm yeah I'm beginning to think that they might actually have a point and Don Quixote is not her real name and she's just copying some stories that she read from books. Oh dear. Someone did actually predict that. Don Quixote, Ponyme Wormdan, Chon Dunn Gokurio. Potong, Taran Higur Sabundre Wormdamer, Yagi Hashasatja. Anion, Choy Wormed, Gunzu Gim Gunetjo. I'm not sure. Let's keep listening. I'm sure Incor Force is thinking, you used me for such stupidity? Do I not scare you? Do you not know what I do to mechanical amalgamations such as yourself? Although no, actually it's canon that she doesn't know about that, she thinks it's just a mask. Oh. And suddenly we jump back up to here. And it's story, okay. Of the very nice occasion that was had between the manager and the magician. Oh, 
나도 모르게 머릿속에서 이야기가 흘러나왔어. 뭐, 뭔가 흘린 것 같았어. 뭐, 마치 그 장면 속에 실제로 있었던 거죠. Except for Heathcliff, he seemed to be out. He seemed to be out of character a bit, but still putting something of a. He was compelled to do it, but he also wasn't compelled to enjoy it. I wonder if they actually in sincerely meant any of that or if it was just an excuse plot to get to beat up a bunch of blood fiends saying that they're evil. Wait, are you just trying to get your hands on the helm? Oh, it's going to be the key to unlocking her Ayla Figo. True enough, Baba was planning on killing Hugo just for the attempt to, to push the button. Don Quixote's rage resumed just as the story ended, but she was still stuck in place as though the tail hadn't left her body just yet. <sighs> because the other people aren't done with their ends, we've got to go and do all the We're basically going to do all the work of unlocking these areas, aren't we? What was that? That wasn't a golden bell resonance, was it? It felt slightly different. Ishmael didn't get a role in that story. It was Rodian, Gregor, Sinclair, um, and then it was Utis, and Heathcliff, and obviously Donny. So about half of the sinners were left out of that nonsense. We should probably steer clear of that blood fiend. No matter how much you want to, Donny. Yeah, that's definitely kindred in nonsense. He took advantage of the La Macha Land's golden bell resonating with a certain sinner among us, which is Donny. If he has control over Donny as a parent to child with the blood kindreds, blood fiend kindreds, then he could actually use that as a way to increase. He could basically use it as a way to take control of the golden bell, which is why it felt sort of like golden bell resonance, but not quite the same thing. Forced. We can't continue this story. We shouldn't. I didn't have the courage to tell them what I've been thinking this whole time. That Don Quixote, the hero of the story in which she vanquished the bandits and protected an innocent village. 
that Don Quixote, whose eyes twinkled with sheer excitement at the thought of taking down La Mancha Land, will eventually be forced to spill before every sinner. Yeah, maybe get it out in the open now. That she is a second kindred blood fiend. She was back to her usual energetic self. But Forst's answer seemed to be pointing towards something else. Once the button was pressed, a low rumble emanated from around us. And a large passageway slowly emerged before us like gargantuan parts of a great machine ponderously clicking into place. Roll credits? Oh man, there okay here. We have our breaks. Unlocked after 1017. Which means that to fill in extra space, let's do some up ties. So at the moment, Alez, gain two poise count, gain one poise count on the first coin. So as long as he didn't lose the clash, he'll semi break even. It won't be perfect if he starts critting. On his second, gain two poise count for a clash win, so he has to actually get the clash and then he gains two poise. Personally, I'd make it two poise next turn because of how poise count interacts, but uh, you have what you have. And then inflict four rupture on hit on the third coin. It rolls decently. 13 isn't great, but he's only up tie one. And then defensive, which does nothing. So this increases his maximum speed. Alez gives him coin power for outspeeding the target, but it doesn't increase the power of this kit. Right, it's 10 at the moment. That would make it 12. And this is the cannot consume or inflict rupture on hit. Gain two poise count, gain one poise count, inflict one rupture. If target outspeeds the target by three or more, Okay, so he has to actually be pretty fast compared with the target. And here's the Preserve Rupture effect. At 7 plus speed, inflict 2 Rupture count. Like, he's going to reach 15 Rupture and 3 Rupture count on his own. They must be planning on giving us some really strong Rupture count and Rupture potency ego this canto. And there's his passive, Dual Livestream. Gain haste for every 3 poise on self. On hit with base attacks. Oh right, gain haste. So it'd take a while for him to get there, but he would eventually start being able to pick up enough speed to reach 7 quite easily. Also, it increases his max speed just in time for that, so yeah. On hit with base attacks, inflict focus, focused attacks, merciful. Dual livestream! Allay and faint. Okay, so for his uptie 3, raise his minimum speed, which is nice. Salute. If, if unit speed is faster than 2 by 2 or more, coin power. Uh, don't consume rupture count. Gain 5 poise on Thash win. If the target has focused attack more assault, another 5 poise. Final coin deals 10% more damage, 10% more damage, 10% more damage for every focused attack slot, 30% on a crit. So that's 60% more damage. Seventeen getting 60% more damage is pretty nice. Okay, so raise the base power. Nice. But no extra effects. Raise the coin power. Very nice. The fastest ally on Clash Win gains one haste next turn. Um, okay, four to seven. He can gain two haste. 
So that gives him 6 to 9. Meaning that it's only under very specific circumstances that after getting his passive up and running and continuously hitting the same target, he would be able to get pretty decent... He's almost guaranteed to get the coin power bonuses. Okay. Wouldn't have expected more salt to be the one based off Carmeo, but yeah. If it works, it works. A detailed answer to that question can be found on page 35 of Sync Association's official promotion booklet. Uh huh, okay. While I can verbally relay that information to you, consider that you are making use of your own precious time to conduct this interview. It is recommended that you ask questions that cannot be answered by external means. Why won't you just give me a straight answer so I can move on to the next question? Don't tell me that the interviewer is Carmen. Like it's an alternate universe Carmen. Yikes. So thought the- oh, never mind. So thought the interviewer as she bit her tongue to hold back that very question. She smiled awkwardly, tightly gri gripping onto her poor microphone. Any local, anyone who has even a passing interest in the sink, actually, would tell her that it's just his style, and the interviewer thought that she knew what to expect from interviewing someone like him. But nothing could prepare for her for just how intense he was. I wish he was just playing things up for the show. But that's confidence in, the, in his eyes. He totally believes in everything he's saying. As she scribbled in her notepad, the interviewer began to rack her brain for what questions she could use to redirect this into a normal interview. Then let's move on to the next question. I've heard that you often broadcast or live stream yourself during work, Marsalt. That is a true statement, yes. Right, and I've watched a few edits of your streams before. Ah, it would be preferable to rewatch the recording of my broadcasts instead of the edits. I have watched several stream compilations of my broadcasts and determined that the various visual effects and exaggerated edits make it difficult to observe the form and movement, both of which are of paramount importance. Ah, I see, I see. This interviewer was infamous in the North for being annoying her... Wait, this interviewer was infamous in the North for annoying her interviewees. In other, slightly more crass words, she was a chatterbox. She knew her own reputation and was willing to run with it if it meant that she could get an even better interview out of her subjects. But... This guy's way worse than I am. The conflicted writing in her notepad was starting to slant from sheer pressure. Anyways, I wanted to ask what got you into the world of live streaming. Hmm. That is a question that has been answered numerous times during my broadcast. Yes, however, this particular recording is for viewers who are not necessarily familiar with the sink or you, Mersault. <laughs> I see, I did not think of that. My apologies. The child bowed politely, then began. It began with the need for anonymous critiques of my form. For reasons that I am unaware of, my colleagues within the association seemed unwilling to make honest criticisms for me. The interviewer had a good idea why, but she did not show it. Instead, she grinned politely and held the microphone closer. As expected, critiques from anonymous sources have been very beneficial to the improvement of my skills. Incidental benefits of this practice were... Hmm, this is quite the timely opportunity. The child stopped and looked to the side. Sync Association West Section 3, Marsalt. Didn't expect to see you this far up north. Um, excuse me, what's going on? I mentioned in passing in one of my broadcasts that I am going on an expedition in the northern regions. Thereafter, I received several simultaneous challenges to a duel. I made an appointment with all of them, scheduled to occur at the same time for the sake of efficiency. However, it seems I have underestimated the duration of this interview. Same here. Didn't think it'd go on for this long. It may be wise to stop the recording for a moment. If you would like to analyze my form, then I refer you to my currently live broadcast. Oh. 
The following scene may be too violent for a majority of your viewers, as you have stated earlier. With that, the child unsheathed his sword and raised it vertically in front of his eyes. I believe that the Ufi Association has already notarized this activity. Yeah, this won't be a duel to the death. Let the one who allows the other's blade to touch their body first be the first loser. Oh, wait. Be the first thing who allows the other's blade to touch their body be the first loser. Very wise. Well then. A moment of silence, then. A gust of wind blasts the field. Then it was all over. The five challengers, who had been holding their swords just a moment ago, found their weapons clattering to the ground in the blink of an eye. Then blood, bright red, suddenly spurted from various parts of their bodies. The first challenger, the wrist, the second, the thigh, the third, the torso. He had struck each of them in their vitals. Or to be more precise, at spots that were approximately a centre away from being fatal. I knew that Western Sync specialised in focused attacks against their opponent's weaknesses, but this is something else. It may be difficult for first time viewers to follow my movement. Viewers who would prefer to review the video may rewatch this stream at a slower speed. The child muttered on as he wiped the blood off his sword, but the interviewer was barely listening. Or perhaps she realised there was no need for her to listen anymore. This interviewer had already gotten her time's worth by watching that impressive duel in person. It would make for a hell of an article. So I guess next time on Limbus Company, we're going to find out what's in the next area. Although, what does he get from his final uptie? Which we could afford. Hmm. I could actually uptie both of the, the Basalt triple star IDs I haven't finished with. Maybe I will, but anyhow, um, allez! If this unit speed is faster than the target, gain coin power based on speed difference. Coin power plus one for every three speed, to a maximum of two. If target has 15 rupture, yeah, we already know about. If faster than the target, inflict rupture equal to the speed difference, to a maximum of three, so it would be four. Gain two poise count, gain another two poise count, gain two poise. If this unit does not inflict rupture, critical damage for every rupture potency it would have inflicted. Four and then two rupture count. Let me actually try to count this out in my head. He hits the target for four rupture. Skill two. He can hit them twice with it, but the thing is... Wait, 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 two rupture count means that it's adding it on top of the four rupture already on it, so it'd actually be four, three rupture count. The downside is that he wouldn't be able to do it with this one. So he's just barely not able to beat, he's barely able not to beat the rupture count problem. Uh, that's unfortunate. Okay, 5 plus 4, so he gains coin power there. If your unit speed is fast, it gains coin power based on speed difference. Plus 1 for every 2 speed, to a maximum of 3. So at 6 speed difference, he can gain 3 coin power. So that'd be 27. Ouch. If target has lots of stuff, it doesn't do that. Okay, gain 20% more damage for every focused attack, 30% damage on a critical hit. So that's 60, 30, plus 10 twice. Yeah, that's a lot, and extra damage for critical hit for all rupture. If this coin defeated the target or destroyed the part, reuse the skill again. But it doesn't activate on reuse. Gain an effect. Coin power plus two if we're faster than three by three or more. Gain haste for every poise on hit. If attack, if we attack a slot with focused attack and defeat the owner or break the part, heal SP. Nice.
Anyway, um, next time I put up a Limbus Company video is probably going to be related to, uh... uh I might... Uh, I am going to space out the week with, uh... Abnormality Battles, so we're still going to be doing all that. But, uh, yeah, until next time, guys, take care, I'll see you all around. Nari 